Good afternoon. I'm Dr. Sandra Martell, the Public Health Administrator for Winnebago County, and I welcome all of you to the first media briefing of 2021. So we're going to change it up a little bit today. We're going to talk about numbers first and then a little bit more about some of the other fronts we're working on. So new cases from Friday to Monday, there were 424, which is an average of 106 per day. Um, and the cases were in ages seven months to 99 years of age. So again, the age breakdown has been impacting citizens of every age in our community. But that brings our total case count to 23,309 since the start of the pandemic. And sadly, we are reporting three additional deaths. And our heartfelt sympathy goes to those families. We've lost three residents again. And our total deaths to date are 361. There are three new locations of concern, Onam Glen, present St. Anne Center, Rosecrans Harbor House, and the following locations, though, have completed two incubation periods without any new cases. So our kudos to them for working hard. Alden Debs, Canterbury Place, East Bank Center, Highview in the Highlands, Milestone Tulip Lane, Morning Star Village, Siena on Brendanwood, and the Winnebago County Juvenile Detention Center. So while we continue to have cases and we continue to go through this phase, it is possible that through the hard work and effort that they have been able to keep the infection rates down and not have new infections. On the testing front, today the community-based testing site officially opened at its 1321 Sandy Hollow. And I, by 945, they were reporting that they had already tested 400 individuals. So clearly, following the holiday, people are getting tested. The hours are from 8 to 4, Monday through Sunday, seven days a week. And we encourage the community to pre-register at testdirectly.com. First of all, it supports rapid resulting, goes right into a person's cell phone, and it eliminates data entry errors, spellings, birthday transpositions, all of those things that make it harder to find your test results. So on the vaccination front, I think some of you probably uh, went over the weekend and found out that on our website that we've partnered with Qualtrics and Ernst & Young for a mobile registration application. We recognized as we moved through this and planning for vaccination, we talked about this when we started to introduce the vaccine, that from a community standpoint, we were going to need a registration and scheduling system and really a way for the community to really put their names in if they want a vaccine so that we could reach out to them as the phases started to roll out. This application is electronic and mobile device enabled. It can be done from a computer, a tablet, or a smartphone, and it supports multiple languages. We understand there are residents in our community that do not use technology, and we will be setting up an alternate pathway for them as well. But I want to make clear with everyone, this is not a first come, first serve. So the fact that people saw the slow roll over the weekend and started does not mean that they get in front of the line for vaccination because the phases are very important to understand. And right now we are in phase 1A, healthcare workers. So as you go through the registration, you must answer the fields that are required. We're asking you to complete them completely, accurately, and truthfully. We also ask that the individual review the emergency use authorizations for the vaccines. And once again, those are posted with multiple languages for individuals. The scheduling will actually roll out depending on the phase, which may include some information. That's why we're asking questions about occupation, healthcare risk, and age. The system will then come out and offer appointments. It will also do reminders and recalls for scheduled vaccination. It will also do reminders and recalls for second dose of it. So remember, reminders before you come, recall. We know some people are going to miss their appointment for whatever reason. It will remind you that you've missed that and want to reschedule. It will assist us in prioritizing individuals based on response to occupation, risk, and age, because we're all learning more about the phases and who and what is in each phase. And that means that members of a household may be vaccinated at different times based on their individual risk. 
And I know that's a hard concept right now, but that is how the phased vaccine approach is rolling out in the state of Illinois. And the goal is to ensure that there is sufficient vaccine, including the type of vaccine for individuals scheduled for a clinic. And this becomes equally and just as important as more vaccine types come online. For instance, Moderna cannot be given to 16 year olds. So if it's a 16 year old in a household and, it, and a parent, it may be two different clinics that they might get appointments scheduled to based on their occupations, their risk, their age and the product. We really wanted to make sure that we had a system that would support equity. It's not a first come first serve. This is not like a concert ticket where we all kind of rapid dial in and whoever gets the most calls in gets the first tickets. The system will help us prioritize based on phase who should be offered those appointments first. We also wanted to support the trust in the vaccine. We often we understood that this was warp speed that people were concerned that it had come to uh, fruition much sooner than we had anticipated. Did we really understand all the side effects? Was everyone learning about the side effects? This system will also follow up after vaccinations are received. It will ask about side effects and reactions. So it won't just be passive reporting, but people, it will go actually reach out to them and say, did you have any of the following? What went on with your va after vaccination? It will also ask about their customer experience with the clinic. So how can we do a better job in delivering the vaccine? Believe it or not, we're open to that as well. It will also then remind them of their second vaccination in the series. So we learn about Moderna being 28 days, Pfizer being 21 days, and we don't know what the other ones might be. So we've got a lot of different moving parts. And so this would system would allow us based on their first dose of vaccine to send out the reminder. We want to encourage the public to go and look at this. It is on our Winnebago County Health Department website, www.wchd.org slash COVID-19. We ask that you not share the link around Facebook, but go to the trusted websites that where it's located, because you will be sharing protected health information as you register for this vaccine. And you want to make sure that you're checking on a reliable source. So we are partnering with the city of Rockford to put it on their website, health system partners, Javon Bay Mercy Health, OSF St. Anthony, Swedish American. We will be working through our school systems as they come on to put that on there. Because again, you want to go to a trusted site. We've been encouraging people not to just click on links. This becomes important that that link be the one that uploads to the system. After vaccination, you as the citizen own your own information. You will have it on your phone. You can take it or your computer. You own it, you can share it with your doctor's office. You can take it and share it with your employer. But the important thing is it will be uploaded as also into the statewide immunization registry that you've probably heard a lot about in other states. In Illinois, we call ours I care. So it's our state of Illinois immunization registry. But I think it becomes important to understand that unlike maybe a record that you have at a health system or your insurance company, you will own this record on your vaccinations. Our goal is to eliminate data entry errors because you will be putting in your own information, the correct spelling of your name, your birth date. Um, we also understand that some people have already reached out to us and said, oh, I gave you my landline, not my cell phone. Uh, but you also have a check on the email. And when you come for your vaccine, when the system goes out to schedule, it would ask you to confirm your information. But we're hoping this will allow us to have more efficient use of our staff as well to provide vaccination. Rather than having to staff up appointment scheduling and having people stand in lines like they are in Florida or Texas in cars, our goal is to be efficient with the use of your time and the use of our staff time to effectively use our staff to vaccinate. Um, the state of Illinois, including Winnebago, is continuing to vaccinate healthcare workers designated as phase 1A. If you are a phase 1 entity, please consider modifying your operations as we have modified ours to vaccinate your healthcare workers. Rec we recognize that this is disruptive and inconvenient for many of our healthcare providers. We are reaching out, as we talked about, oh, it seems like right before the holidays, but now it seems like a year ago almost, but we reached out to the dialysis centers and the blood banks and the dentists and the, all of the ambulatory surgical centers and the home health care agencies and the hospice providers, and the list goes on. But the idea being that 
we've got to get this group vaccinated before we can move on to 1B. So 1A folks, we need you to make sure that you're vaccinating with us in this timely manner so we can get the rest of the group moving to 1B. And remember that your community is helping to do this vaccination effort. We're working with our Medical Reserve Corps, which includes volunteer physicians and nurses and pharmacists, in addition to our hospital partners who have been the sites of these locations and vaccination centers. It has been a total collective community collaboration to get this done, and we appreciate all the work. So some considerations as you begin to start your registration process is one, make sure you're reading those emergency use authorizations for the vaccines. Read them for both Moderna and Pfizer right now. Think about if you want shared email addresses for your family, because again, you're going to need to start to get protected health information. And that may be a, you know, something you want to consider. The, le the registration will come back with your name on it to that email address. But if you have a list of six or seven in your household on one email address, it may make it more challenging. Physicians' notes do not expedite vaccine efforts. So please remember not to, I'm going to say, call your clinics, your physician offices, your hospitals to ask for vaccine because they cannot go beyond phase 1A either. This system was designed to help all of us, not just the health department, but our entire community prepare ourselves for vaccination and to get vaccinated in the appropriate phase in the most efficient and expeditious way possible. So a couple of questions have come up. SMS messaging, that's text messaging for Lingo. We'll put that, we got a suggestion from someone. Um, and email confirmations may take longer than a sales transaction. So if you're used to getting automatic, uh, low your Amazon or whatever order has come through, it goes through our trusted website. It will come back. The email address is COVID-19 vaccinations at WCHD.org. It will confirm back. It will not be an outside address. We're not going to ask you to click on it because again, we understand the public is very weary of that and does not want to get into a situation where they inadvertently click on a site that is not trusted. And please be patient and report any problems that you have to the COVID-19 hotline. But we've been working on this for a while. Uh, we did a soft rollout, put it up to see, and so far we've had over 4,500 registrations come through. So we know that people are interested and want to get vaccinated as quickly and efficiently as possible. So the other thing as we start the new year on the contact tracing front, schools are preparing to return after the holiday break. Um, we have worked with the schools, several of them already, to start after the break for the cases identified in school students and staff over the holidays. Yes, unfortunately, we had some cases in staff and students over the holidays, but we're working to bring everyone back to in-person with the blending of remote where possible. And again, we will be working through that process to continue with our contact tracing efforts with the school teams. We ask that if you travel over the holidays that you notify your school appropriately so you can quarantine. We are still on the 14 day. You can't test out of quarantine in Winnebago County. That has worked very effectively in helping us, you know, stem some of the transmission that we have. The idea being that we are all in this together. And the sooner that we can stop some of the transmission, again, we continue to work through all of those fronts. So today we talked a little bit about the vaccination front, the contact tracing front, and the testing front. And we are going to continue to fight this, you know, coronavirus on all of those fronts. So we all have to do our parts. We've got to wear our face coverings. We've got to be intentional about our contacts, limit our exposures, get vaccinated when we're in the appropriate phase, if we choose to vaccinate, stay home if we are sick, and continue hand washing because we now have another strain, not in Illinois yet, but throughout other areas of the country, of this much more virulent strain that is much more contagious than previous strains. So we still have to keep our guard up. We can't let it down as we step into the new year. If we want to get through to the end of that tunnel, to our vaccination, we're gonna need everyone pulling on the same train. So with that, I'm happy to take any questions. Uh, Dr. Martel, you said that there was a couple of, you know, uh, holiday spike potential, I guess, right off the bat there. You talked about testing at the new site 400 already. Are you preparing for a holiday spike? Is that something that you see on our horizon? 
And the question is, are we preparing for a holiday spike? I think nationally, everyone is preparing for this holiday spike. We're starting to see a little blip. You think Christmas was about a week, 10 days ago. Um, we also know that some people are testing before they return to their work sites or come back from a holiday trip or wherever they're coming back from or if they're going back into or going to travel, some of the airlines are requiring that. So again, looking at that, we want people to maintain vigilance. You may have done a great job over Thanksgiving. We know it was much harder. Um, I kind of have said before, I don't know what you would have done with college students who have to come home. You can't leave them at college all during the holiday break. So we know that there were some exposures that really could not have been avoided. But really the idea being that we're going to monitor it. What we don't want is a spike that overwhelms our healthcare system. Dr. McCall, you had touched on the registration system and that you had a soft rollout of that. We do know that there are people who did get that email. So you had said around 4,600, I believe, is, is what um, responded to that. So where was this sent out to? Well, first of all, there was no email sent out. Okay. I want to be clear. We posted the button on our website. So these were people cruising the website on the weekend or over the holidays who happened to link on the button. We did not send a, a, it out. And you can, when we do a soft rollout, we wanted to test a couple of things. One was our system capacity over the holiday. You know, you want to make sure you've got all your IT supports in place, right? And also we know that probably over holiday weekend, people are watching a football game. Maybe they're sitting around with family. Maybe they're, we know that's one of the number one days for people to look for jobs on Indeed. We thought, Okay, we'll see how many people hit the website and cruise through it. And without any guidance, got through, I mean, quite a number of individuals. So the idea is it's not, though, a first come, first serve basis. So let's be very clear. And those initial, I'm going to say, early registrants helped us on a couple of things that, you know, were little glitches. Called our hotline in the morning and said, hey, I tried that site. Here's what happened. And so, you know, again, that was the idea is that we learn the issues early. So then as we expand it out and put our official notice out today, here's where you can go, that we've resolved those issues for everyone. You said 4,500. That's a real minute amount of the population, obviously, here in Winnebago County. Do you guys believe that you have the system in place to handle, a, you know, a mass rush of people trying to sign up on this registration site? The question is, that seems like a small number. Um, and yes, we went with a system that would be able to be able to, we had heard, and I'm going to ask one of the questions that come up, one of the sites, Lake County, you may have heard at issues initially with theirs. We wanted to make sure that we had a robust service provider that can able to handle that volume. They know the population size. And again, we're continuing to monitor. Uh, the challenge has been more, I think, the response email back from us. Um, on that response email, you, you kind of said that they're going to get an email from you guys directly. I'm guessing it doesn't give a direct date or timeline. Um, what kind of information do people get back from the health department? Is it, you know, are they in this phase? Is there any sort of inclination there? And the question is, what does the email, right now it says you've been registered. And we will be outreaching to you when vaccine is appropriate for your phase. Because as you know, this phase, uh, we've had this discussion, is fluid. Right, so phase 1A has expanded, you know, it started out with first in-hospital care providers. My apologies there. Um, with health care providers first, then we've had expanded to dentists and, you know, optometrists. I mean, we've kind of expanded beyond the hospital walls. Phase 1B, they've talked about the critical infrastructure workers, some age category, as well as other first responders. And the state will be identifying who that is, which is why we ask that very detailed questions about occupation. It is an honor system. So we do expect our population to be honest um, because we're not going to do phase jumping here. Um, I think that that becomes very important to understand because we are using a federal asset and we are working with the state to dispense that federal asset. And so we will be following the phases. Now, the, the challenge that you hear is different states put people in different phases or individuals based on risk criteria and factors. And so I know that, that I've heard about people that want to go to Florida for the winter or they Florida in Texas and they'll say, can I get my vaccine? They're getting it there differently. Each state has a different plan to address the phases. And that's an unfortunate, but it is the reality check. In Illinois right now, 1A are healthcare workers and they're very broadly defined. But I want to be cautious and careful. Phase 1A folks, you need to get vaccinated. We need to be working with you. I know that there are times when you want to say 
that this is you know what you want to do this is where it's easier for you the challenge is that phase 1b is waiting for phase 1a and so the state will be the one that gives us the go ahead to move into phase 1b um, i just have one follow-up there uh, so do people then, when they register, do they get any inclination as to what phase they're in, or do they have to interpret that on their own? No, no. The question is, do they get a notice saying your phase this, that? No, the, the challenge is we are not going to give them that because those could change as well. That's my point, is that the definition of a phase is fluid. When we go out and say, let's say phase 1B includes individuals 65 and older, and I this is for an example only, I don't want anyone quoting and saying that's what I said, and it, you have to have certain following health conditions. The system will go out and pull me all those individuals over 65 with the following conditions. We will get a number, we will set up that pad, we will schedule them, the system will go out and schedule them. Because the other challenge we have is the vaccine management, right? There's not an unlimited supply of vaccine. And frankly, there's not an unlimited supply of vaccinators. So we have to coordinate all those resources to effectively vaccinate the individuals. So when that comes, they might say, okay, this category of people, we're gonna schedule you for a clinic at this location for this time, here's your choice, plug it in, and we will see you. You have a vaccine dose reserved for that day.